Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Dishonored the Bridmore Witches, part two of the DLC of Dowd's Journey, the evil assassin that murdered the Empress. So let's get into it. Save game of Knife of Dunwall has been found. You can use your progress. Oh cool, we get to save our shit! High Chaos, hell yes. You've chosen High Chaos. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Because we're going for the High Chaos ending. Were we on Veteran? I think we were on Veteran. I don't remember if we were in Veteran or Elite. We sure as hell weren't on an Assassin. Um, I guess Veteran? I... I don't remember! <laughs> I don't remember what I picked. Alright, carrying on. You've been ill at ease ever since you assassinated Empress Jasmine Caldwin and aided the abduction of her daughter Emily. Troubled sleep. He knew. The black-eyed bastard knew that when my blade stilled the Empress's heart, and delivered her daughter to the Lord Regent's men. Everything would fall to pieces. He watched me do it anyway. And now the world's gone mad. Plague grinds the city down. Corruption rots. A mad killer roams the streets by night, seeking revenge. The overseers have stormed my hideout in the flooded district. And I'm in a strange duel with a mad witch named Delilah for the fate of the Empire. I'd say I was being punished, but I know that the world doesn't punish wicked people. We make our choices and take what comes. And the rest is void. That's I a can't very say I wasn't cowboy. warned. Yeah, the uh, outsider did warn us about being evil. It's been months since I killed the Empress. But it feels like only seconds ago, I heard her yelling for her daughter, Emily. Corvo's face going slack with shock. And somewhere in my head, the outsiders laugh. Come to collect on our debt. Did you ever think you deserved to lose your Empress? That a better man took her life, while you gaped like a fool. Come on, Corvo. Prove me wrong. We start right at the duel? Holy crap, we do! Crap. Where are the rest of my abilities, man? What you got? Come on! Holy crap. Oh! Vision of the future? Damn it, sir. Thomas has returned with the information you requested. He's waiting for you below. That's the future that's in store for me because of the fact that I've taken the high chaos path. Lovely. Ports of call, except from guide to port cities across the Empire of the Isles. Potterstead Gristol, a small town, but the locals are charming and the ale is unmatched. Be certain to visit during the month of winds for the Pennant Festival. Dunwall Gristol. Notes on the capital city could fill a dozen such volumes. All delights exist in Dunwall if you've got the coin, and all the miseries if you're broke. Unless you are well connected through someone in Dunwall Tower, one of the key families, the City Watch or River Patrol, make sure your permits are in order. Otherwise, you're likely to have your cargo seized by the port authorities for any reason they care to concoct. Call Kenny Morley. While the harbor master here is particular about the kind of goods you're carrying, the rest of the town is more lax. We should have visited the Inn of the Rock at the best for the best mutton stool in all the Isles. One second, guys. Sorry about that. Yarrow Tivia. The cold here will snatch the breath from your lungs, but it is met in equal strength by the civility of its well-mannered citizens. The cozy taverns are kept warm by the famously halved 
craft, carved, crafted iron stoves, though the northern food takes some adjustment. Bejeweled aristocrat, aristocrats laugh and drink side by side with weathered, leathery skinned farmers, clapping one another on the back until the dim hours. It's hard to make a friend here. It's hard to make a friend here? It sounds like it's not. It's hard to make a friend here. I truly understand the worldview of the native born, but once you do, you'll have a friend for life. Okay. Calero Circonus. The city is crowded in the warmer months, and for good reason. You'll find yourself shoulder to shoulder with the scantily clad locals and foreigners on holiday. Pale skin burned in the sun. Burned pink by the sun. Which somehow seems larger and brighter than Circonus. The food in Calero is a shining example of Circonan cuisine. And there's always music, always dancing. Hand rolled from the steps of the tobacco shops, the cigars are of course fresher than the ones you've had shipped from other parts of the empire. Karnaka Circonus. The jewel of the south at the edge of the world. The city is bustling with industry. After a wave of settlers from Morley and an influx of wealthy trading companies from Dunwall. Everywhere you go in Karnaka, there are new ideas. Hybrid forms of music, groundbreaking theories of natural philosophy, and even extravagant delicacies made by mixing ingredients from all known cultures. The locals work tirelessly for their coin, welcoming the elites from across the aisles. Now, one thing that's actually been mentioned by a lot of the fans is they actually hope, and I agree with this, that the next Dishonored takes place on one of the other aisles, because we know there's four aisles, and this one is Dunwall's on Gristol. So, yeah, we, we should get a chance to see some of the aisles, other aisles. That'd be cool. Regency and emergency powers. But the time, in the time of political upheaval, there are provisions in place for a stage transfer of power, designed with three goals in mind. The first is the minimization of incentive for coup. There is no predetermined person or position within the government that is scheduled to take on the mantle of the regency during a time of crisis. Instead, a regent is chosen by parliamentary accord. This serves to avoid promoting a path of derelict ascendancy and to discourage those who would scheme for such a turn of events. It is the assumption of our governing documents that such a legislative body will always have the wisdom to see through the would-be usurpers. Yeah, right. The second is the assurance of stability from the commons during and after the transitional phase. During an inter... Uh, interregnum? I'm not sure how to say it. Interregnum. While an, a regent rules the land, there are categories of law and decrees that cannot be altered without a majority vote from Parliament. Thus, daily life of the people will not change dramatically when during the time of regency or shift drastically once the proper heir takes up the throne. Third, and perhaps most important, is the worthy successors found. In order to rule out hasty action and maximize st stability, there will be no term limit or duration applied to the period of regency. Historically, rash decisions have been greatly contested, resulting in extended political turmoil or outright conflict. When the proper heir is found and the position is filled by someone worthy of the role, all others will fall in line and support their su offer their support. God, there's a lot of books. Cobbled Bits of Bone, excerpt from a journal covering various occult artifacts. So, who is this? Okay, I don't know who this is. They say my mother was a witch, but the truth, as so often the case, depends on perspective and your, your place in the world. She relied on potions made from exotic herbs and the blowfish that live in the reef waters near Pendicia. Her power originated in hallucinogens, hallucinogenics delivered through the guile or by force to those who crossed her. There was an unusual intensity in her gaze for certain, but when it came from within, not from the outsider, it's what happens... It's what happens to anyone pushed to an absolute edge of sanity and survival, who stays there for years, then returns to walk among the sheep in so-called civilized society. My mother was crafty, but it was anything more than powders, hidden knives, and guile. I never saw it. Like they tell children, some of those truly touched by the black-eyed bastard can move through the space between rooftops like a sparrow. Others command armies of rats or poisonous flies as they easily, as easy as they wriggle their fingers and toes. The overseers are right to fear us and warn the common folk to stay near their homes at night and keep their families close. But there are other ways his influence manifests itself. There are those who serve me those who serve me share in some of what I can do, and I suspect it's for the same for Delilah Copperspoon's coven. Then there are those who can craft runes and charms. The old woman across town, they call her Granny Rag. She carves and polishes the bone of whales, stringing them together and opening them to the void until they moan like a fever sick for on a cold night. I found a few of her talismans, and with each one I touched, a tiny piece of me departed and settled within her. What does she gain? A longer life? Some kind of power that I don't understand? Making such things is beyond me. I know four people in my time who carried the mark of the outsider, but I've known dozens more who wanted it, stood at night in stagnant ponds or begged with the dust blowing through graveyards. People who gutted farm animals or burned the flesh of men, thinking it would call forth the void. I met a dying man once who'd collected runes and charms for years. He crushed them all into powder and made a paste and ate them thinking he could gain whatever magic was in the, in the things. His death was long and painful. I also knew a woman from Karnaka who would trade for charms and other bits of whalebone. She cracked them apart and fused them back together, then sold them. 
I bought one of these corrupted charms that she swore would cause sharp metal to break on my skin, and it worked. But each time it did, one of my teeth turned black and fell out. After the third time, I gave it to one of my men, who now smiles. Now, when he smiles, it's all bleeding gums. I wonder what parts of him inside are turning black. Sometimes I ask myself, without these gifts, would I be a man to fear? Would I be called the knife of done? Oh, this is... I'm an idiot. This is, this is uh, our guy, Doubt. With a name whispered through the markets and the alleys. The high towers and the drawing rooms. I'd like to think so, but it really doesn't matter. As long as I bear this mark, I'll use whatever craft I have to force my will on the world. The hardest trick is undoing what I've done. Isn't that a little late for that, Spartacus? Reclamation of Dunwall, except from a pamphlet published in response to the plague. One second. As you can tell, I'm still recovering. Sorry about that, guys. Dunwall, the seat of powers, known in the civilized world, the Empire of the Isles. It is our great capital. It has been brought low by vermin. The very thought galls. We are faced with the reality that our once great city is in the state of shambles, and the few remaining domiciles in any, any inhabitable condition are the estates of those wealthy enough to ward themselves against that reality. The city cannot continue to thrive, populated by only the upper class and their cloister sycophants. Even if the plague were gone tomorrow, in its present state, Dunwall doesn't have enough hardy people working of working age to return the city to everyday function. We must find a way to attract more residents, which requires removing the cloud of fear brought, by, brought about by the current regime. The Glord region and his lackeys are bad for business, my friends. So it falls on us. A plague and a tyrant must be overcome. After that, we must undertake a third miracle, turning the screws to the obscenely wealthy, forcing them to pay back into the place that has given them their privileged lives. It is the powerful and the fortunate who must pay for rebuilding of Dunwall, even if the poorest will bear the stones and timbers of reconstruction on their backs. But all this must happen for the dormant machine of commerce to restart. Without that, we are all forfeit, and the greatest city of our age will be lost. That's kind of true, actually. Is that stuff below me? Where'd... I thought all my... Okay, I only didn't have my powers for the thing. Okay, I got it, I got it. So... Why don't I have the good stuff? What's going on with that? So that'd be like three. So this needs to be, what, vision? So it'd be four, five, whoops. Six, seven. So that'd be like, what, eight... Uh, nine. Zero, I guess. Alright. Carry on. Okay, so let's go to the vision mode. Nice. Yeah, there's stuff below us. I always wondered if I could just, like, start ganking my men. <laughs> just, just idle curiosity, man. Uh, blueprints. What does this one do? Boot stealth. Oh, these are the ones I had before. I got it. The Metaphysica Mysterium, excerpt from a long, longer band work on supernatural rituals. It is said that we should not sully our hands when combating the forces of the void. My studies have been deemed heretical by my brothers, but the rewards have been invaluable. I have harnessed the same energy, energies employed by the outside and his accursed followers while avoiding their corruption. I will oh wait, no. We already read this before. Indirection and containment. Right, 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 right. Okay, I got it. Yeah, we already have read that. I found Lizzie Stride. Getting her to lend us her boat will be a bit complicated, however. She's in Coldridge. From what I hear, they've got enough on her to hold her for about a thousand years. Great. Excellent. Lizzie has enemies inside Coldridge. If we play this right, she'll be begging to do business with us. Yes, no, that's sir. true. Your tools have been cleaned and placed in the chest over there. I'll wait here until you're ready to leave. So we talked to him when we're ready to go. Thomas's journal. Recent entry written careful in the careful hand. Our troubles began with a name, Delilah. A mystery given to Dowd by a face he sees in his dreams, and whose voice he hears, hears when kneeling at the shrines hidden in the lost parts of the city. None of us have ever heard this voice, but we know its power. It spoke to our masters, telling him of his coming doom, and saying that solving this riddle it was the only way to escape. We knew nothing of Delilah, except that we found a whaling ship with that name. A tenuous connection, but where the outsider's world is concerned, there are no coincidences. We discovered the ship was named after a woman who once walked in the halls of Dunwall Tower with Jasmine Caldwin. Later she became a painter, an apprentice to Sokolov himself, till she snared an aristocrat patron by the name Arnold Timish. We met with Tim Schneese, who offered us information on Delilah in exchange for eliminating her uncle. Removing aristocrats was, aristocrats was our specialty, so our master agreed. With Barrister Arnold Timsch gone, his niece divulged everything she knew, that Delilah is much more than a painter, and she was hiding in the old Brigmore Manor outside the city. But by then we were too late. Delilah anticipated our threat. 
For some time, she's been working on a corruptive influence on the best of us. The assassin, the assassin Billy Lurk. Delilah turned Lurk against us, and together they sold us out to the overseers. When we returned to our hideout in the flooded district, we were swarmed by gold masks and hounds. But Dowd is quick and wise in our trade. In the end, he kept us alive, though there were losses. Our resources are strained. Some of our men are grumbling. I see the strain on Dowd's face, killing the Empress, handling, uh, handing over her daughter. Those are not e easy burdens to bear. And Lurk's betrayal weighs hev on him heavily. His sleep is troubled by curses and shouting. Now we make preparations to strike back at Delilah. She's planning something in Brigmore, something that affects everyone in the Isles, and she will be expecting us. Like our master, she shares our gifts, her gifts for the outsider, from the outsider with those who follow her. How many are there, I wonder? I have no secrets from my master. My loyalty is without question, but I fear these may be the last days of the Whalers, perhaps the last days of doubt. Oh, you know it. Sorry about the cut, guys. It's from an extended video. We had to chop it up in sections so it would fit our time frame. Thank you, everybody, for watching. You guys are awesome viewers. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. It means a lot to me, and I hope you enjoyed them. So you all take care of yourselves, and you want to see more of me, keep up another video on the list, or stay tuned for more. Feel free to leave a comment below, or remember to tag the like button if you enjoyed the video, if I could actually remember to talk properly. In the meantime, goodbye, everybody.